Good day, students. I'm here again. My name is Mrs. Ihe Jumala. I'm here to take you on agri-science. Our topic this afternoon is on production of cereal, a cereal crop. Remember, in our last lesson, we tried to classify crops based on their uses. The part of the crop you use and what you use it for. So this group that we call cereals, why are they called cereal crops? By the end of this lesson, one, you have to know the botanical name of maize. What is the botanical name? What you call scientific name of maize? Yes. If you go to the market or you get home, you tell your mother or your father or in the market that you want to buy Z maize. They will be looking at you. So what are you talking about? Not knowing that you are talking about maize, corn. So you have to know the botanical name of maize. Again, you have to know how maize is grown from land preparation till you harvest it. Land preparation to harvesting. Three, you know this pest that attack maize when they are in storage. The ones that attack them in the farm. And then what you use maize for. These are the things you have to know in the, this lesson. So we start maize. Maize is called Z maize. Z maize. That's the scientific name or botanical name. Z maize. Please, Z. Z E A. The Z is capital Z. Z. Maze. M A Y S. The M is small letter. Z. Maze. Z. Capital Z. Maze. Small M. And then you underline it. In some textbooks, Students always ask this question. In some textbooks, no many textbooks, you will see them, they write Z maze, not on the line. If you look at it very, very well, carefully, you see that the Z maze, that's the botanical name, is written in italics. Written in italics. When they are written in italics, you don't need to underline. But you, you cannot write in italics. You write with you in your common handwriting. That is why you must underline it. Z maze. Z E A capital Z M A Y S small M. If you write Z capital Z maze small uh, capital M. Is wrong. The examiner will mark it wrong. Please note that. If you write two of them, small, small letter, small z and small m is wrong. The z must start with capital Z and then the maze m, capital m, a uh, small m on the line. That's the correct name. Z maze. Okay. Let's move on. Maize is also, what is the common name? Corn. We all, all of us know what is corn. And that is what we are enjoying now. Corn. In any form you like, you prepare it. Maize is a grass-like crop. Grass-like crop. But it is edible. Grass-like crop that is edible. 
when you see growing in the farm initially, you look at it, you think it's grass. But it produces edible fruits. Grass-like crop, but edible. So maize has different types, what we call varieties, different varieties of maize. We have flint maize, flint maize, we call it indurata. This small, uh, this flint maize, it has small cobs. The cob is small and it bears hard round grains. Grains are the seeds that it produces. The seeds are round but small. We call them flint maize. Then we have another variety, the dent maize. The dent maize is called adentata. How do we know that? Dent. This dent maize has large cob and large grains. The grains are big, unlike the flint. But the grains have, has a dent, as if we use something to heat it. It shrinks when it dries. A dent. Dentata. A dentata. Then we have this other variety we call floor maize. The floor maize is called the amelasia. The grains are big and when you grind it, it contains a lot of flour inside. These are the ones we use mainly in for industrial purposes. Then we have the popcorn. You are familiar with it, the popcorn. We call it Evata. The Evata. The grains are soft and they easily burst when you roast them. And they give us a noise, pop noise, pop sound. Boom, boom, boom. When you are roasting it or you are frying it, the popcorn. So they have pop sound when you apply heat on them. They are salt. Then we have the sweet maize. This one is very common. Sakarata. This is called the Sakarata species. The grains are soft and they are very sweet when you boil them fresh. Very sweet. The sweet maize. Then we have another species. It's not very common. The pod. Not pop. Pod. P-O-D. The pod maize. That is the tunicata species. Tunicata. This one is mainly used by researchers. They use it in research industry. When they want to make research, it's not very common. In Nigeria, maize is widely grown. There's hardly any part of the country where maize is not. Every group produces maize. In the north, in the south, in the middle belt, everywhere they produce maize. And they, every part of the country eats maize. In the production of maize or any crop, there are two most important things, very, very important. You must note the climatic conditions that favor the growth of these crops. What are they? The climate of the area. And when you are talking about climate, you talk about rainfall and the sunshine. Rainfall. And the, sorry, and the sunshine, that's for the climate. And then the rainfall, amount of rainfall. Some crops need 
much rain, enough rain, like the rice when they are growing. Some don't even like rains at all, just little rains. They don't like much rain. When there's so much rain, it affects them. So the most important factors when you are discussing the growth of any crop, the climatic conditions, the temperature, and then the rainfall. We have other things to talk about, the humidity, and so on. But the most important thing, the major things, before we talk about the type of soil they need, and so on, and so forth. Okay, we move on. For maize, maize really needs rainfall of about 75 cm centimeters to 152 centimeters of rainfall per annum the whole year from the beginning growing to from the time you plant it to when you harvest it between 75 to 152 between 75 cm to 152 cm so if the amount of rainfall is 102 is it conducive Yes. If the rainfall is about 130, is it conducive? Yes. We say between 75 to 152 cm per annum. The range. Not that it must be 75, it must be 52. The range from 75 to 152 cm per annum a year. The soil requirement. It grows on variety of soil, different types of soil. It needs different types. It can grow in different types of soil. But it grows well on well-drained, well-drained sandy loamy soil. We have done types of soil. Sandy loamy soil. Loamy soil. Okay, we say loamy soil. Can you tell me what is important since we say loamy soil? Sandy loamy soil. Yes. Loamy soil. Yes. Loamy soil is rich in organic matters. Look at the emphasis. Sandy loam, mixture of sand and loam that is rich in organic matter. Very good. That's the type of soil that means means. Then pH of the soil. pH. pH is the acid base level. pH of the soil. It needs a pH of 5 to 8. 5 to 8. Remember, our C pH scale is between 1 to 14. So between 5 and 8, it's not too acidic, it's not too alkaline. So pH of 5 to 8, which means it is slightly acidic and slightly alkaline. pH of 5 to 7, slightly, little bit acidic and little bit of alkaline soil. That's what it means. Okay. For land preparation, when you are preparing the land. Okay. Maize should be planted on open space. So it's an open space crop that does not like shade. You don't plant maize where there is shade. These trees will cover. No, it needs sunshine. Why? For photosynthesis. Very good. So land clearing should be done with matches. Use your matches to cut the grasses, the trash, collect them together and burn. Remember, we discourage bush burning in agriculture. Because when you burn, you destroy the organisms in the soil. So you use matches to clear, gather together and then burn. Then you plow. Plowing is a first 
tilling. You plow, you harrow the second tillage, and then you make your ridges or heaps. You can plant it in you know, a ridge. You can make a heap. You can also make a mound, and then you plant. You can even plant on a flat ground. Just plow, harrow, and then you plant. In the north, in fact, they plant on flat ground. They don't make ridges or beds. They just plant it on flat ground. Maize. How do we propagate maize? Maize is propagated by seed. Maize, we plant the seed. Unlike something like cassava. We don't plant the seed of cassava. We plant the same. But maize, you propagate by seeds. And then in maize, some crops you plant first in the nozzle and later you transplant. But in maize, you plant directly in the farm using sticks or cutlass. It can also be planted mechanically. That's a mechanized farming. They use what we call planter machine. We will do that machines, different types of machines. When you go to SS3 planter, or when you go to Mudike, you even see it yourself. They see the machines used for planting, see the machine used for harvesting, use the, see the machine used for applying fertilizer, the machine used for weeding, different types of machines in your SS3. So we plant using steel, cutlass, or mechanically by using planting machine. That machine will measure the distance, open the maze will drop, it will close the ground, continue moving. It's very interesting, a planter. When do we plant maize? We plant maize, the early maize, early maize. You plant between March and April in the south. March and April in the south, then May and June in the north. May and June in the north. You see, you can see now, the period for early planting has passed, both in the north and the, in the south. Planting of maize is over now, early planting. Then we have a second planting. Second planting, that's late planting. Late planting comes both in the north and the south, in August. You see, very soon next month, people will start planting the second phase of maize, both in the north and in the south, provided there is rainfall. Okay. Then when you are planting, it's very, very important. You see, like now we are saying COVID, COVID, social distance. Maize also observe social distance. We call it planting distance, spacing. You don't plant all your maize together. If you are planting only maize, only maize, you plant it, you space it 90 centimeters on the row. 90 centimeters, you plant, you measure distance, 90 centimeters, you plant again. You measure again 90 centimeters along the road. But if you are planting maize and you want to plant maybe cassava on the same land, you plant it, give a spacing of one meter. You plant one meter again so that in between that space, you plant something else. So you can plant sole maize or you can plant mix. Plant it. You plant it with other crops. Then we have what we call seed rate. Seed rate. What do you mean by that? How many seeds? Remember we said that you propagate, you plant maize by seed. It's the seed of maize that you plant. How many maize seed do you put on the ground? You open a space. You put about two, three or four seeds. In the ground and cover it. And where you want to put it in the ground, you open the ground. 
you don't make deep hole. If you make deep hole, if the hole is deep, the maze will be struggling to come out, and on the way it will die. So it's five centimeters. The depth is about five centimeters, so that it can easily come out. And then when you plant your maize, not you plant today, tomorrow you go to the farm to check if it has germinated. No. It takes between four to seven days. Just about one week. Then you can go and check if it has germinated. Then where if it fails to germinate, after one week, two weeks, you plant a second time. That second time you are planting, we call it supply. We call it what? Supply. So supply you mean planting a second time after the first planting. Some some of them will germinate, some will not germinate. So you see spaces in between. You plant again. And that planting again is called supply. That's what is called in agriculture. Then, after planting, you don't go to your house and start sleeping. That is when the work starts. You have a lot of things, activities to perform. We call them cultural practices. First of all, you have to weed. You don't allow weed on the farm. You weed continuously. Immediately you notice weeds, you go and weed, remove the weeds. Immediately you notice weeds, you weed. Because if you don't weed, those weeds will make use of the nutrients in the soil. And the maize you have planted will not get enough nutrients to grow. They will grow, make use of the nutrients, make use of the water, space and everything. And then they will press your maize. And your maize will not get enough nutrients. So you can weed manually. Using your hoe or your hand or cutlass. You can weed manually using your hoe, your hand or your cutlass. Or you can weed make, sorry, you can weed chemically using herbicides. Yes, using chemicals. You use Heavy size to weed. You just apply it in between. Don't apply it to your maize. If you apply it to your maize, your maize will die. Okay. Then after weeding, you apply your fertilizer. For farmers who can afford fertilizer, some farmers don't have money to buy fertilizers. You apply fertilizer. Remember, we said maize is a cereal crop. Cereal. So, cereal crops, they like nitrogen. So, you apply NPK. Yes, I know you are very familiar with this fertilizer. NPK fertilizer. About four bags. You apply four bags in a hectare of your farmland. If you have money. You can also add can. Which one do we call can? Calcium ammonium nitrate. You apply it. Five bags. You can apply urea, another fertilizer. Three bags. Five to six weeks after sowing. By then you have weeded, maybe once, weeded a second time. Then you apply. Then assuming you don't have money to buy fertilizer, you can apply organic manure. Organic manure. What do you mean by organic manure? Poultry droppings. Go to the poultry where they have poultry, collect the droppings and put it by the side of your meat. Farmyard manure. You spread it on the farm. On the farm, the maize will still do well. And then, once you notice any wood, you remove it. Okay. Maize matures. Maize matures in 
between 90 to 120 days. How do you know that it is mature? Some people, you go and open the cup. No, it's wrong. You see the tassels. That thing that grows out at the tip. When it dries, looks brown and shrinks. Then you know that your maize is okay. Then you harvest. You harvest the maize. When you harvest, depending on what you want to use the maize for, want to eat it fresh, you want to sell it fresh, you sell it. Or you dry it. You dry it. You dry the cups and store them in the crepes. You store them in the room booths. In the local places, villages, they store, they hang it over fire. On a, this is a small scale. You can also store in large scale in drums, very big drums. But before you store it, make sure you dry it very well so that the amount of water moisture in it will be between 12 to 14 percent. You can also store in silo. If you go to the university, you see silo. You store them there. It can remain there for years. It will spoil. Maize. What do you use maize for? Uses. We can consume it fresh, just like we are doing now. You roast it, you boil it, and eat. Some we use their own as popcorn, they sell it. Some use as corn flour. This corn flour, they use it to produce cake. Some use it for fufu. And so on. In the beef, uh, in the, uh, brewing industry, they also use maize in preparing drinks. Some well-known industries also extract oil and use the corn oil. Very expensive. Then the stick, after harvesting the stick, they use it to stake yam. We are going to do yam production. You can use the sticks of maize to stake yam. So in the lesson, we have concluded with maize production. And I'm sure some of you will practice if you know, have a place where you can grow maize. Remember the botanical name, different types of maize. When you are planting, know the type, the species you are planting. The rainfall, the land preparation, what and what are you going to do when you plant, before you plant, how many seeds are you going to put in the soil? And you weigh the type of fertilizer you will add. And then when it is due for harvesting. And when you harvest, how do you store them? And what can you use it for? These are the important things you have to note in the production of cereals. In the same way, remember there are other cereal crops. Rice is also a cereal. Maize is a cereal wheat. Millet, they are all cereals. So you take suit. The same way you produce them, you can produce this.